Hey everybody, it's Peter Coffin. Are you racist? We're we're going there. It's racism time, baby. Sweet baby. Picky baby. An entire nation of picky babies. So they're doing everything they can to make fetch happen. I mean Gamergate too. Um, people are gonna repeatedly advertise my book Woke Ouroboros for me though. They continually demonstrate that wokeness is an ideology of segregation and essentialism. Now, in that book, I make a little bit of an argument against the concept of reverse racism, but not to say that when people are calling out something as reverse racist, they're calling nothing out. Uh, they are actually correct that what is happening is racialized and probably bad. And an example has cropped up that I believe very clearly demonstrates the point that I make in the book, and I'd like to show it to you. So apparently the narrative designer at Cliffhanger Games, who is making the next Black Panther game for EA, posted some nonsense and it got posted to libs of TikTok, and Asmongold responded to it, and uh, there is a two-minute clip that summarizes everything, and wow, do I like that. I like that. Bro, I think she blocked me because I, I tried to pull it up, it didn't show up. Context. Current narrative designer working on EA's upcoming Black Panther game explains why she wouldn't hire white people on her own indie game studio. Who is your team? Validate has a team of mostly people, mostly all people of color. We have no white people on our team. I did that because I wanted to create a safe environment. And I know the best way for an environment to be mm -hmm. safe is to be around people who are just like me. It is hard to work with white people because they think that something made okay, but it was really a microaggression. And no one wants to deal with that while they're trying to make a game that they love. Isn't this like basically illegal? So stick with your own kind is never really a good ideology. It might sound good at the beginning of something, but it usually by the end of the thing becomes bad. Ask the Germans. So there's a couple of pieces that I think are notable here. The first of the two is the more important, so I'll focus on the second. First, the second thing she mentions it is hard to work with white people because they think that something made okay, but it was really a microaggression. I, I'm just going to say that her saying a microaggression with a grin on her face, that's essentially a microaggression. That's basically uh, it's intended to make people uncomfortable. Now, in Woke Ouroboros, I talk about microaggressions as a means to hunt for liabilities. It's basically uh, the human resources department slowly combing through language as to find what is actionable and what isn't. Then these things are incorporated in employee handbooks and ultimately in diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, which regulate behavior in a means that keeps the company from getting in trouble, i.e. getting sued and having to pay people money. So like I said, the first thing she mentions is the more important one, at least in terms of what we're talking about. Who is your team? Validate has a team of mostly people, mostly all people of color. We have no white people on our team. I did that because I wanted to create a safe environment. And I know the best way for an environment to be mm -hmm. safe is to be around people who are just like me. So people have used this as an example of reverse racism. Reverse racism, sometimes referred to as reverse discrimination, is the concept that affirmative action and similar color conscious programs for redressing racial inequality are forms of anti-white racism. Now, libs love to push back on the idea of reverse racism, but I think they do it for the wrong reasons. To simply think something is bad and search for justifications for it is, I mean, it's the very top level, the very beginning of interrogating some kind of societal ideology. And when you approach everything idealistically and not materialistically, you end up with very stupid reasons. Now, I've seen people push back on reverse racism as projection, as simply projecting one's own racism onto somebody else. I've seen reverse racism be identified as a sneaky way of being racist. And all of that is nonsense. Some of them almost get there when they say, well, reverse racism isn't real because it's the less powerful group hating the more powerful group. And that's so, so close. However, 
because they don't get the materialism side of that. They don't actually think about power as in terms of real power, but rather just some sort of nebulous, magical thing that people have. That defaults to essentialism. It's also very likely the reason why this woman thinks what she thinks. She doesn't believe in the concept of reverse racism. She thinks that what she's saying here is entirely justified because she is safe with people that are like her. Stick with your own. Now that sounds like racism towards white people, right? That's why this criticism comes up. And to be completely clear, there is a tension here. When people call this reverse racism, they're not pointing at nothing. But the trick is, it's not reverse racism. It's a woke Ouroboros. It's just racism. An Ouroboros is the image that I used. Um, it's a snake eating its own tail. Might be a dragon. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is two dragons eating each other's tails. Uh, but generally, it is one thing eating its own tail. I'm safe from the big, bad, powerful whites is not that different from white power. The difference is the order of words and who is saying it. The concept, however, is not deriving from any material analysis of power. It's coming from the idea that because something is historically correct, that in the past, white people have had more power, that it's simply true, which, by the way, is an ideology of essentialism. White power and white people are more powerful are the same thing. It's a snake eating its own tail. And when people get close to that, but don't do the materialist analysis of power, which is by the way, derived from ownership of the means of production. When you own, you have power, you can direct society, you have license to change things to your will when you own the tools to do so. But you see, the problem with that is it detaches it from race because then anybody can be powerful. That's the reason why this kind of ideology has to persist. That's the reason why wokeness has been pushed so hard. It doesn't interrogate power as a whole. Wokeness tells us that the problems of capitalism, say, are that white people are at the top. Men are at the top. Cishets are at the top. Whatever. It doesn't matter. If we could only get diverse folks in at the top, things would be fine. And before somebody says, no, that's not what we think, why do you have such a problem with class reductionism? I'm not reducing who you are when I talk about class. I'm talking about where power actually comes from. You're reducing who you are by acting as though power comes from whether or not you are white. That is not reverse racism. The hatred that comes from that towards white people is actually self-hatred. It is racism towards minority groups. It is saying we are less powerful and must be protected. It is self-infantilization. It is saying that you are inferior to whites. That's not reverse racism. That is generally where a person from a historically marginalized group uh, who hates white people, that's generally where that hatred comes from. The lack of safety, or even a lack of mobility, a lack of uh, ability to progress within one's job or uh, community or whatever. If one were to follow the logic of ContraPoint's Envy video, um, what we're talking about basically is jealousy. Uh, that's why I think that people shouldn't follow the logic of ContraPoint's Envy video, because it's not simply jealousy. These hatreds come from historical power imbalances. It's just that, without talking about it from a class angle, it's just basically magically true. And when you make something magically true, you're being essentialist. That's it. That's the end of the discussion. If you talk about where power comes from, ah, it stops being white people. And it starts being ownership of productive, value-generating property, which, ah, goddamn, buy my fucking book. All right. And I'm not attacking Asmongold here. Uh, again, I think that he is identifying an issue. He just 
doesn't come at power analysis from a material perspective, which is the same as our friend the narrative designer. These two are both coming from an idealist perspective. They're not really talking about where power comes from for real in any way, shape, or form. And that leads them to these conclusions, which are incomplete at best and very dumb at worst. In the case of the narrative designer, actively racist towards herself. I, I think that's all I got for you. Lick the like buttons, slurp all over those, uh, subscribe, become a subscriber, uh, money me, go over to patreon.com slash Peter Coffin and money me. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good day. Bye.